Hi, and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be discussing how to do push notifications in Expo React Native. So what you're first going to want to do after you just created your basic Expo project using Expo in it is to just stop the program and download some packages. So I'm just going to wait for it to stop. Perfect. And you're going to want to install Expo, install Expo notifications. And as expect, this is what has the push notifications library. And just wait for it to install. And perfect. Once it's done, you can restart the server. And that's just done by Expo start. And then once the metro loads, you can connect it to your simulator or you can connect it to your physical phone. I'm going to be using a simulator so that everyone here can see what I'm doing on this device. Let's just refresh. And awesome, now we have installed the Expo notifications library into our app. The next thing we're going to want to do is import it into our page. So you're just going to say import this as notification. So that means we're importing everything from Expo notification. So import stars to so import everything from the library as notifications from Expo notifications library. Okay, great. The next thing we want to do after we've imported it is to get permission. You should never just send notifications to somebody's phone without giving them permission for you to do so. So therefore, the, uh, what we're going to do is step one, import the library, which we've already done. Step two is to get permission. And then step three, I'm going to show how to do push notifications on button click. And then how to schedule push notifications. So we've already done number one, let's go on to number two, getting permission. So I'm, I'm going to create a new function get permissions. And this is where we're going to be getting the permissions. Now this next part, I just copy pasted in because this is something easier to just paste in than write from scratch. So you'll be able to find this inside the description below. And I'll just walk through what it does. So first, it just sees whether this is a device because for something that isn't a device, which is somehow running the app, then you obviously don't want to send push notifications. So then if it's a device, you're going to have it do this code. Otherwise, it's just going to say it must be a device for push notifications. The next thing you uh, inside this if statement, what it does is it first gets notification uh, permissions. So it says get permissions async. And if it already has permissions, then it's not going to re-ask for permissions, right? So that's why I say if it's not already granted, then it will actually request the permission. So here it's seeing whether there's already permissions. Here it's requesting it. And if you do get the permissions either from already having the permissions or just getting the permissions, then it's going to just and create a token, which is a token that you need to send the push notifications to that specific phone. And I'm just going to set that into my local storage so that um, if I want to use it anywhere in the app, I can just get it from local storage. And we'll just import, uh, we'll be importing the libraries we need for this in just a minute. And then Otherwise, if you don't have the permissions, then 
they'll just send you an alert saying you need to get the push notifications and then it'll just set the local storage to nothing so as you can see it's set it to token here but nothing here and then after you exit and this decision making of whether or not i'm just going to push this back so it's easier to see that this is part of that after you go through this then you also have something else to check whether it's an android the reason is because if you have an android then you can set how push notifications look so this is kind of um setting those styles up for the future so you can change this if you want uh, i would recommend just playing around with this one and this one not really playing around with the other two but if you'd like you're feel free to change this to look like how you want on android ios does not have a similar thing so if that is something to keep in mind if you're customizing your android notifications how do you do the same thing with ios or at least give the same information even if it doesn't have the same looks or appearances so as you can see we used a lot of libraries that we haven't used before or we ha at least haven't imported into our project so let's get them imported so we first want to import constants, which is what we use right here from expo constants. And then we want to import the local storage. Now you don't have to use local storage. This is just if you want to use it throughout your program. So you could just create a variable here. And if you just want to use it within this screen, but I'm just doing a storage so that for, uh, because that encompasses a larger audience. So as you can see, we're getting some errors. First, we do use a wait in here, so that means this must be an async function. And also we need to import these two libraries. So again, we're gonna close the server and we're going to do expo install and just look at the names of these two libraries, expo constants. And then you can install both packages at once. Async storage slash async storage. Okay, and once it installs, just restart the server. And I'm just going to get it up onto my phone. And then once it loads, you can see that we now have no errors. So the next thing we want to do, we created this as a function, but we actually want to run the function, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, inside my use effect, and for those who haven't used use effect before, use effect is a function that will only run the first time it's rendered, or it'll refresh whenever you put like a variable inside these two brackets. So if you put, uh, if you create a variable, const var equals, this and then you put var here every single time var changes well it shouldn't be a const if you're changing it let var equals this every single time you change var it's going to rerun whatever is in here so that's just what use effect is and as you can see we need to import use effect this time we don't have to close the code because this is just inside react itself and i'm just going to move this const permissions into the use effect. And then I'm just going to call get permission. But as you can see here at this stage, I do need a physical device in order to run the push notifications. 
I'm going to try commenting this out and seeing whether I can do it without a physical phone. Otherwise, it's going to be up to you to run this on your physical phone and, uh, as you follow along. So let's refresh the app. And as you can see, it doesn't give permissions, which means that this doesn't work on a simulator. So it's going to be up to you in order to run this on your phone. So now if you open up your Expo app, like I've done on my personal phone and try running the code, you can see that it works great. So if you are running into any problems if you don't see it working then let me know in the comments below and i'll try to help you out something great is that if the user uh, says no the first time but then they go into their settings and give you permission again then it doesn't give the give permissions error because they granted it inside the setting. So that's just something awesome that Expo push notifications does for you. So now that we got the permissions, the uh, next thing we're going to want to do is do push notifications on button click. So I'm just going to import touchable opacity and touchable opacity is basically the button inside React Native. And here, I'm just going to remove this text and I'm just going to add a touchable opacity. And then inside the touchable opacity, I'll just write like a click me to send a push notification. And I'm just going to add some basic styles so that it looks like a button just basically. So I'm just going to make it red and I'm just going to add some padding and I'm just going to make the color of the actual text itself white and perfect. This looks great on my end. So inside the touch wall opacity, you're just going to want to do an on click. We're going to create a separate const for on click. and just put this into the on click here. So every single time this button's clicked, it's going to run this function. So inside this function, we're going to do automatic push notifications and then we're going to work on scheduling push notifications. Okay, great. And I just quickly changed this to press because on click is for something else. So the next thing you want to do after we've created this little function here is you want to go back up to the top and we're going to set some parameters for the notifications. These types of parameters include whether it's going to play a sound, whether you want it to go to, to, to like the badges for notifications. And this just sets some basic expectations, I guess, for a notification. So you're going to do notifications.setNotificationHandler. And notification handler is what sets those parameters for the notifications. And you're going to next do handle notification colon async. And you're going to do parenthesis. And add this curly braces. And inside is where we're going to be setting these parameters. So there's three parameters you can set. You can set should show alert. And we want this to be true, right? Because we do want to show the fact that we sent the push notification should play sound. This is definitely custom to you. When I send push notifications, I like to have the sound. So I'm going to send true and should set badge. This is set to the push notifications like badge section. And I want this to be true, but you can change these to be false on your preference. Then I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to 
set three variables const notification set notification and this is just a variable which says whether a notification was set you want to have a notification listener which listens for these notifications and you're going to use something called user ref here and make sure to import those in, from your react and then const response listener and these three variables are just what expo notification uses so you we won't be interacting with these specifically much it's just that you need these variables in order to send the push notifications The next thing you want to do is you want to set a listener for these notifications. I know it's a lot of steps, but hopefully um, this tutorial is going to help you understand those different steps. So I'm just going to quickly review what we've done so far and then go on to set a doing that next step. So we imported the libraries, we got permission, and in order to do the push notifications, we're setting the standards or what we want a notification to look like. We're setting some variables and then we're going to set a notification listener. And I'm just going to paste this so that, um, because there isn't really much to it, you can get this from the description box. And what this is doing is that it's just adding some signaling or some listening to sending notifications. And then note that this does use the three variables that we set above. And then lastly, we can set the notifications. So this is like the main part of what we're doing, right? To send the notifications. So we're going to inside our on click, we're going to do await notifications.schedule notification async. And this takes in two parameters. It takes in the content of the notification. So that'd be like the title. So let's say title body which is body and you uh, can customize these two i'm just putting something random in and then data is like that little um description at the bottom right below the body so i'm just going to say data goes here and then we want the trigger which is when it will be released so we want it to be released one second after the button's pressed so now if you press the button, you'll see that you get a push notification. So this is how you send a push notification right when the button's clicked. If you want to schedule a push notification, you just customize the trigger here. For example, you can set a specific hour. For example, hour is seven minute is let's say zero so this will send on the seventh hour so that'd be 7 a.m and you can also do repeats as true so that means every single day at 7 a.m it'll send a notification so I, uh, sorry that this tutorial went a little long i'm just going to quickly review what we did we import libraries we got permission from the user using get permissions we set what a notification should look like we set a notification listener we sent our notification and we also sent um, scheduled notifications. So I hope this video was helpful and see you in the next video.